Nice one, guys. Well, good luck out there. Good take luck, it. Good sailing. Take it steady. <laughs> yeah. On what? Good amount of wind out there, isn't there? We'll see you drifting around on the start line, eh? It was really worth all that rushing earlier on there, wasn't it, eh? Yeah, we can think about the fish and chips down the pub, really. Kinsale was pretty good. We got there and we managed to find the boys from um, Freebirds sat at the bar, all freshly clean-shaven. We were a couple of hours behind them, or an hour and a half behind them, and just it was more important to get the boat tied up and head to the bar and grab some food. So we were looking a little... Uh, a little rougher than they were, but it was good to meet with the guys. That started a, a good relationship that we had all the way around yeah. of uh, bumping into them in all the uh, restaurant bars and cafes. The rat packs, which um, we first used on the powerboat race, um, self heating bag. We, when we prepared them, so they came in a uh, cardboard box, and so we took them all the packaging out and then we wrapped them up with different colour electrical tapes to uh, flavour them. Or figure out which flavour was which. And obviously the red was for the curry. Tastes pretty good actually. For rough weather, perfect solution. Supper for two. Fantastic. The boys on Spliff started just ahead of us. Um, we managed to overtake them, but I think they're just coming back to slip past us in a moment. see uh, a couple of class 40s on the AIS just behind us and nobody in front of us. And for a little moment I thought we might be in with a chance of actually being first boat home here. behind us. And 
This is the view in front of us. coast. It was blowing about 25 knots, probably picking up to close to 30 when we got hit by this big gust. And I went down below and suddenly noticed that the starboard hull, uh, there was a rather large amount of water rushing around in it, which was a little bit shocking at the time. Fitting had sheared off of the salt water pump for the galley, which had effectively turned this pump on. So it pumped a, a very small part of the Atlantic Ocean into a very large part of the boat, probably taking on a good couple of tons of weight again. This, this time the ballast was on the right side. It was, that was about the only side. benefit of this occasion. Initially that's not a problem because it's contained within a series of bulkheads, but it had overflowed from the, the contained area into where the fuel tank was and somehow got into the fuel system. So this then affected the engine because uh, we had water in the fuel but because our generator is on that engine it then affected you know the power that we could charge and, and we also had the diesel stove on that side so we basically found ourselves pretty much without um, intermittently we got it to run without uh, charging facilities and cooking facilities which meant no tea uh, which is disastrous in Rupert's case, I would imagine. Absolutely. <laughs> we didn't have electric bilge pumps, but we had a manual bilge pump uh, fitted. And this was a standard um, production boat bilge pump fitted for many boats. But on the third pump, the actual bilge pump itself fell to pieces in my hand. I was not particularly impressed and quite upset that, you know, you could get three pulls out of a pump, which is brand new. We then realised we couldn't actually fit a bucket down into the bilge, which then left us with a saucepan. So we had to fill the bucket with the saucepan and, uh, and the baler, and then put it into the sink and bale away, basically. So this probably cost us another hour or so. But an interesting and a good experience. Part of going on a trip like this is to find out which equipment works well and what doesn't so you can make sure that you can build boats better than you ever have done before. Racing round here again. <laughs> a little too rough under there at the moment, but every time we uh, we put a reef in, we uh, it speed drops down, and we uh, before we should pull it out. Every time we pull it out, the wind comes up, and then we put it back in again. So we're just going jack at the moment. days already. Um, well, on the way to Barra day. Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Eating a bacon sandwich. She just cooked uh, while having a windward tussle with um, cold fusion. There's things there like rocks to avoid. Rocks. <laughs> rocks with seagulls on them. Castle Bay approaches, just come out to the finish line. We had a really good run, run up that way as we zoomed in on flat water, cruising along at 18 knots on a tight reach. We thought, this is really good. How was it then, Dan? It was good. It was quick. But unfortunately, 
especially as we finished the line and we got around the corners of the anchorage, there were I think, three boats ahead of us, a couple of class 40s and Paradox. But um, when we got ashore, did our declaration, we were all in first place in the Montanese. So, yeah, very good leg. Is that shore support in Barra? Or is it drinking, drinking support? One of Dan's old school friends lived on Harris, which was slightly slightly further north from Barra, but he came down with a friend of his and took us on a tour of the island, which was great. Went to the Barra International Airport, which is on the beach. The tide goes out and the aeroplanes land on the on the sand. Saw some beautiful beaches, well worth a visit, I'd like to go back there another time. <laughs>